Hello, my name is Roger Pressman. Over the last 30 years, I've been a software engineer, a software project manager, a professor, a consultant, and an author. During that entire time, I focused on software engineering topics, and I've seen a lot of change. Some of it good, and some of it disappointing. During this video module, we'll be focusing on the future of software engineering. So let's get started. Why did ancient kings hire soothsayers? Why do major multinational corporations hire consulting firms to prepare forecasts? Why does a substantial percentage of the public read horoscopes? We all want to know what's coming so we can prepare for the future. Unfortunately, there's no foolproof formula for predicting the road ahead. But we can observe the current technological environment, collect data, and organize it to provide useful information. We can examine subtle associations to extract knowledge, and from this knowledge, suggest probable trends that predict how things will be at some future time. But a word of warning. Even the most methodological analysis of the present cannot guarantee accurate forecasts for the future. It always seems that there's a wild card. And it's often the wild card, the thing that no one foresees, that has the most profound effect on the road ahead. Bill Clinton, the 42nd President of the United States, is beginning to fade into history. He led an interesting life, to say the least. A comment he made on the future is well worth remembering. One of the things that I think we've learned is that we should be very careful about making predictions about the future. All true. Thomas Watson, the chairman of IBM in the 1940s, said the following infamous comment. I think there is a world market for maybe five computers. He was off by only a few billion. Luckily, the technologists in his company didn't pay much attention to that comment. And IBM continues to be a world leader in technology. Ken Olson, the president of digital equipment in the 1970s, said, there is no reason anyone would want a computer in their home. Unfortunately, the technologists in the company listened to Olson, and digital is no more. And Bill Gates, still the chairman of Microsoft, in fact said in the 1980s, 640K ought to be enough memory for anybody. Vista requires about 50 megabytes but Microsoft continues to be a major technology company. It's difficult to predict the future, even for people who are involved with making it every day. But we're going to try, and we have to start someplace. So let's take a look at the big picture. The big picture for software engineers is the coming of software-intensive systems. These systems will have a profound impact on virtually every modern technology. Software content in every product and service will continue to grow, in some cases, dramatically. Software must be demonstrably safe, secure, and reliable. Why? Because as time passes, it becomes heavily integrated into what we call human-rated systems. If the system fails, a human being can be injured or possibly killed. It's critically important that we achieve safety, security, and reliability. Another important factor when we look at software-intensive systems is that requirements will emerge as those systems evolve. This may be one of the most important characteristics of future systems. It's something that will challenge software engineers for decades to come. Interoperability and networkability will become dominant as mashups become the norm. 
When I use the phrase mashup, I mean the coincidence of two, three, or more applications all merged to provide additional information or a variation of information or more information than any one of them could provide by itself. This will become increasingly common as time passes. A smart world demands better, more reliable software. Technological trends will dictate software trends. Software trends will dictate software engineering trends. The challenges facing software engineers will get no easier as we move into the second decade of the 21st century. New process models, methods, languages and tools will emerge. But to borrow from a famous saying by Fred Brooks, there is no silver bullet. There is no single software engineering trend that will make software suddenly and magically easy to develop, foolproof, safe, and reliable. It will take a combination of process, methods, languages, and tools to achieve that. And we'll take a look at these as we move further into this video module.